For the following exercises, use the descriptions for each pair of lines given below to find the slopes of line one and line two. And then is each pair of lines parallel, perpendicular, or neither? So first thing is, here's line one, and they give us two points on a line. Anytime you know two points on a line, you must know that you can indeed easily now calculate the slope. Okay, how? Well, by remembering the slope formula. Remember, the slope of any linear line is simply going to be the change in y divided by the change in x, meaning the change in the y coordinates of the points divided by the change in the x coordinates of the points. And in other words, you can take this and simply rewrite it as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's how you find a change in something. It's always a subtraction right? Pretend that you were trying to find the change in your bank account and you started with, let's say, $10 in it. And then over some time, you now have $100 in it. How much did your account change by? Well, change by $90. How did you figure it out? You took the final value, 100, and then you subtracted from that the initial value of 10. And that worked out to be, I'm not really sure what that number is, but that, that, that should be a one. Looks like a backward hook or something. I don't know. Anyway, 90, right? Should be 90. And that's how this formula works out. It's when we say y2, we kind of mean like y final, all right? Uh, minus then y initial. Now it turns out that, well, it turns out that, let me just get rid of this, right? Because, okay. And it turns out now that it does not really matter which point you call one or two. It doesn't matter. Okay, you could call this your set of two point, you know, your second points and this this one, your first point or vice versa. I'm just going to do it in order here. So I'll call that X1 and this one will be Y1. This is X2 and that's uh, Y2. So now let's just plug it on in. So I'm going to write here that the slope of line one, because that's what I'm working on. So I'll put a little sub one, a little subscript there is going to equal the Y2 value, which I defined as three minus then the Y1 value, which is five, all now divided by my x2 value, which is 3, minus then my uh, x1 value, which is 0. So doing some math here, it's going to be negative 2 over 3. And that's basically all I can reduce it down to. So there it is. Now we're going to do the same process with our line 2. Okay. Now why don't we change the color here? Let's get a little happy blue. So this is x1 comma y1. And this is going to be x2 comma y2. If anyone knows where that little comment is from, leave a, uh, <laughs> leave a description by it. Let's just get back to me. I'll forget about it. Um, okay. So M2, <laughs> M2, I'm sorry. I don't know how to, I don't know how to make, how do you make slopes interesting? I don't know. Channel, channel your inner Bob Ross, I guess. I, I really don't know. Um, I would have never thought I'd like painting until I watched the show. And then I was like mesmerized by it. Um, all right, back to math, back to math. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. So our Y2 value, which we define now as negative two. So negative two minus then our Y1 value, which is negative five. Be careful with the signs here. Use parentheses. Then divide it now by our X2 value, which is three, minus then our X1 value, which is one. Doing some math now on the top, it's now gonna be a negative two plus a positive five, which works out to be a positive three. And then three minus one is simply a two. There's not really much more that we can do with this now, right? It's just going to be three halves. So now that we got the slopes for each line, now what we have to do is compare the slopes of the two lines to one another. What is their relationship? Well, first thing in order for them to be parallel, remember they have to be the same exact thing. Are these identical? No. So they're not parallel. The next thing we have to check is, are they perpendicular? How do you know if they're perpendicular? Well, the two values have to be negative reciprocals or opposite reciprocals of one another. So first of all, that means that one of these has to be positive or negative, and the other one has to be the opposite sign. So we have a negative and a positive. So we already have a check there for perpendicular lines. We don't know if it is yet, but that's the first filter, so to speak. The next thing is to see if the fraction of, or the value that you're dealing with, and it should be a fraction because reciprocal kind of implies fraction, but if the fractions are reciprocals of one another, and that just means are they flipped versions of each other. So if I have a two over three here, and this is a three over two here, that's a reciprocal. So basically put the two things together and these are negative or opposite reciprocals of one another. And therefore they are perpendicular. Now, 
let's see how fast we can apply this process by going through the second problem. So let's find the slope of line 1. Again, they gave us two points, so we know that we're going to be using our slope formula, change in y over the change in x, and we know that that works out to be y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Great, so now let's calculate the slope of the first line. Call this your 1s and call this point your 2s. So the y2 value then is negative 1, minus then our y1 value, which is 5, divided then by our x2 value, which is 5, then minus our uh, x1 value, which is going to be 2. Doing some math, the top now here is essentially going to be an addition of negative numbers, so that's a negative 6. This is then a simple subtraction, so that's 3. And I can reduce this down on to uh, basically become negative 2. Now what I'm going to do is because I always want to check for opposite reciprocals, is I'm going to write it as negative 2 over 1. It's the same thing, obviously, as saying negative 2 but it might just be easier for me to compare later on. So now let's calculate the second slope. So the y2 value there is going to be negative five. The y1 of value is gonna be seven, so minus seven. The x2 value is three, minus then our x1 value, which is negative three. Be careful there again with the signs. So now we have m2 is gonna be equal to negative five minus seven, so you're essentially adding negative numbers there. So that's gonna be a negative 12. This is a double negative here, so it becomes positive. So it's essentially three plus three, which is a six, right? Cool. And now here, M2 is now going to equal a negative. What do we come up with there? Well, it's basically gonna be a negative two, okay? And I'll just write it as negative two over one. Now, what we have to do is compare these two slopes to one another. First filter is, or first check is gonna be, are these going, are these slopes parallel? And for them to be parallel, they have to be identical. Are they identical? Yeah. So, we're done. Parallel. Guys, hopefully this helped. I appreciate it very much. If it did, tell your friends, all right? We'd love to uh, help as many people as we possibly can. And we appreciate your support so very much. We look forward to helping you with more problems. Be well.